Hey guys, Oscar, truckersauthority.com. So today we're gonna go over how to get your MC number for your freight broker authority. So I'm gonna go through the entire application from A to Z, all right? Uh, so one last thing, we do process authorities, okay? So if you're not looking to do this yourself and you want someone to do it for you, that is something that we can go ahead and take care of, okay? Uh, the reason we put all these videos out and the resources is because we notice that there's a handful of uh, there's a handful of audience out there that is going to do their permits on their own. But what would happen is they would come back over to us and we would have to fix it and it would delay them. So that was kind of the start of the process to create some of these videos is, uh, hey, I know there's going to be people that are doing it on their own. So hopefully we can at least provide uh, some content Content that can guide you along the way okay but if you need someone to process it um, this is something that we can do uh, for you okay and you can go to truckersauthority.com for more information you're gonna need insurance to activate that bond if you're looking for somebody to help you out with the insurance uh, check out our friends at goldriverinsurance.com all right so let's go ahead and get started how to get your freight broker authority all right, let's get started. All the links will be in the description, all right? So any website that I go to will be in the description. So we got to get to the FMCSA registration site. So we'll just type in FMCSA. That works, USDOT registration. Um, these are ads right here, ad, ad, ad. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do our own uh, freight broker authority. So here we go, registration, FMCSA. So this is the registration. And if, if, if you come into FMCSA, um, you'll, you can just click here. Right. If you enter anywhere in the website and you just type, just click here on the registration. And this is the registration page and um, it'll it'll tell you other things you need. For example, like your UCR and a BOC3 in order to activate your um, uh, your MC. OK, so uh, we're going to jump straight into the application. I want you guys to know I created like a two minute video on how there's also this website here um, from FMCSA and the link will be there where you can actually no matter what. Uh, you do so if you're a motor carrier, um, passengers, hazard, hazardous material, uh, regular um, property and household good, or you're a broker. Um, it actually provides you with uh, PowerPoint slides um, and step by step in case you wanted to um, to follow along, basically. So I'll have this link there, but we're going to jump straight into the application. And most of these applications are the same regardless of the authority. Only a few questions are different. So let's get started. Um, and here it's saying, hey, um, just so you know that um, this is a government side, you know, don't be doing any fraud stuff. I understand. Take me to the registration. So we're going to do new applicant. And, and, you, and you can return with the logins that we're going to create in just a second. Um, and uh, this is just telling you about that, um, that you're going to create a, pass a username and password. It's telling you you're going to need your EIN if you have this and then who the owners are. This is a Dun & Bradstreet number. Uh, it's basically, um, it's like your company's um, uh, own uh, cr uh, credit history. There you go. You can build credit history with the Dun & Bradstreet number, okay? Dun & Bradstreet. So it's telling you you're going to need that information. Hey, at the end, you may need insurance in order to finish this job. This is what this page is saying. So we'll hit next. Um, uh, designation of process agent notice. Um, basically, letting you know that um, that if uh, that you're going to need somebody to um, be your process of agent notice. And this is basically the BOC3. Um, then it says on this one, uh, issuance of active US DOT number. So just because you have a DOT number doesn't mean that's all you need. You need to check with your state. This is saying that, hey, at the end, we're going to need somebody saying that everything I've put in here is true and not falsifying, whether you're a partner, sole proprietor, or somebody doing uh, this for you on your behalf. So in the beginning, they're just telling you about um, the uh, almost like the rules of this application. It says, hey, we collect this information for you. Um, so here it's just basically saying that, um, you know, your information is, is going to be collected and that's public record. So that's something for everybody to know that within an hour and 20 minutes of your of your application being completed, that they're actually going to be third party um, agencies that will give you a call saying and making it seem like they're from DOT, but they're not. Um, and they just want to let you know that that these people will be contacting you as uh, your business information is public information. So let's go ahead and go to the next part. So in this part, it's asking you to create um, a password. Um, so we'll go ahead and just do that right now. So I'm going to save my, my username. Normally what I do is just put it on a notepad, all right, and then save it. So I'm going to save my username and then enter the password. 
Okay, so then it asked me, uh, you know, secret question one, secret question two, and then I put my answer. So all of this, again, I save all of this information in case I don't finish the application and I need to log back in. If for whatever reason you can't log back in, you lost your information and you didn't submit it, you have to restart it all over. So as long as you didn't submit it, it's no problem. You can just do them over and over again. All right, so I entered my information. I'm gonna hit next. Again, make sure you keep that to the side. I said, uh, this is basically uh, the contact information. Who are they gonna be contacting in case um, they need to, um, in case they need to send anything out? So who's gonna be the con uh, um, the company contact? So you can put applicant representative or company contact, either one works. And this can be also the person who's helping you out with your permit, it will be the same thing. So in this case, if you're doing it for yourself, just so you know, all the information you're gonna be putting in here is basically your information, your name, uh, and your address, and, and, you, and you'll see that. So we'll just go go ahead and, and uh, fill this out. Okay, so I went ahead and filled that information. So here's what they're looking for, for the company contact. This is, again, it's just gonna be repetitive. It's gonna be um, your, your information, application contact title is gonna be owner, if you're the owner. Then after that, it's gonna be your address, your the, com, com, the application contact, all right? So uh, whoever is um, doing the permits for you. Um, and again, if you're doing it yourself, it's gonna be you. And then your phone number. So going to the bottom, it's then going to ask you for after your phone number, it's going to ask you for your email address. Okay. And then it's going to ask you, how would you like us to contact you? All right, by email, by US mail or both. So you always want to select both. Why not? You know what I'm saying? Like if they, if they need to get a hold of you, do both email and by mail, send them both ways. So hit next. Again, that's going to be your information. Okay. So FMCSA needs to capture the business details regarding the applicant. Cool. Does applicant have a Dun and Bradstreet number? Nope. And if you do, you go ahead and select yes and put it in there. So the legal business name. So if you guys saw uh, in my other video, I went ahead and created an EIN. So we're just going to work with that one. Oscars Trucking Company LLC. And hit next. And, and, and just so you guys know, I know I'm putting trucking, but this is uh, for a freight brokerage authority. That's what we're gonna do for a broker authority, all right? So we'll hit next. Oh, going back, previous. So let me go real quick. Legal business name. So if you're a sole proprietor, the legal business name is your name, okay? Um, and I talk about this in my other videos, but you wanna make sure that you're set up as a corporation or LLC to protect yourself. You really wanna do that. You know, no ifs, ands, or buts on that. But if not, your legal business name, if you're a sole proprietor, it's your first basically your legal name on your license if you if you open up a company and you have a name for it this is where you put the the legal business name so in my case oscars trucking company llc if you have a dba so doing business as which i don't you can put it here and you don't need one some people have um you know they'll have one llc and then multiple things under it you really don't want that um every ain should have should be for its own business so every entity should be for itself so if you have a dba doing business as you would open this with your state excuse me, with your city, um, you can go ahead and do so. Um, but again, you don't need it. Uh, most people don't have it. Is the applicant's principal place of business address the same as the application contact address? Uh, so we'll go ahead and put yes. Again, if, the, if you're doing this yourself, it's most of it's going to be your information, um, your address. Um, then it's going to say, hey, this is what you're saying is, is, the, is the address. Are we good here? Then scrolling down, it says, is the mailing address different? No, it's the same. So let's go ahead and have the same. Now, I want you guys to know that you can have a PO box as a mailing address, but a PO box will not work for a physical address. The system will not let you through, okay? So we'll go ahead and hit next. Now it's asking for the business number, not the contact phone number, but the actual business phone number. In this case, if you're doing it all yourself, then it's gonna be you. Now, just a heads up, as I told you, whatever number you, whatever email, whatever number you put here, it's public information and, and you will start having people from like, um, you know, from ELDs, from insurance, from um, drug and alcohol consortium, just different things, emailing you and giving you a call. And it's really heavy the first week and the first month and then it, and then it dies out. Um, so let's go ahead and put a phone number in here, United States. So if you have a fax or you want to use another number, you can. I'm going to go ahead and just put one number for myself. Hit next. Then it's going to ask you for your EIN, so your tax ID, or your social security. If you're a sole proprietor, you're going to be using your social security. If you have an EIN, then you put it in here. Um, so let's go ahead and add that. Okay. Once you enter it, hit next. Now, 
make sure you enter the correct one and at the end uh, you'll actually be able to look at it because you're going to need your EIN number to retrieve your PIN. So make sure all this information is incorrect and you can double check it. So we'll hit next. Then it says, is the applicant a unit, a unit of government? No, I'm not part of the government. Then it says business type. So, so proprietor partnership, I'm a limited liability company. In what state? I went ahead and opened up in Nevada. In Nevada. Let's see. Here we go. Hit next. Uh, who's it owned by? Citizen of the United States, Canada, Mexico. So citizen of the United States. Hit next. Okay, and now it's asking for the company contact. So name and titles of, so right here, this is for the owners. Again, in the beginning, the company contact, that's for whoever's, um, if anybody's processing the permits or if you have any representative that handles all your permits, that's who that would be. Right here, they're actually asking for the owners of the company. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and fill this out. Okay, so I went ahead and added um, my, basically it's just the company contact information, first and last name, middle name if any. Uh, the email address and the phone number if you want to add more let's say there's multiple owners just hit more and then you put company contact too and you just and you just keep filling in the information add more and so forth you keep going okay right now it's just myself it's only one owner so let's remove that and hit next okay now it's asking for the company the actual company physical address of the actual company Okay, and, and then um, if you guys are wondering, so no P.O. box, can't use a P.O. box, it won't work. Um, and uh, uh, most of these addresses are your actual home address, okay? So like I know people are looking for like virtual offices and P.O. box, you don't need to. Uh, most of these applica applications are, are from your home office, excuse me, from your office, um, from your home, excuse me, and you work from there. So if you want, if you have an office then you put the, in a physical location, great, um, but if not, uh, basically, it's how you open the business and most of us are opening the business under our home. So this is old address I have, but I'm using it as I used it with my EIN. Uh, let's see. Actually, if you put in the zip code, it'll actually just pull everything up for you. So let's do that. Cool. Okay. So this is the business address. All right. So your business address. All this should match your tax ID and your LLC, by the way. By the time you're done with this, it should match your tax ID and LLC. Um, so now it's just going to say, hey, review all your data. Make sure it's correct. So you go through, uh, basically make sure all your data is correct. And then up here, this is where you can check if your EIN number is correct. So I'm going to check it real quick. And yeah, it's correct. And again, because you're going to need that number to get your PIN. All right. And that'll be later on. I'll show you that bit. Uh, this is all good. Let's hit next. Now it's going to ask you what type of operating authority do you need? So we're going for this one here, okay? Because we're doing the freight broker authority. All right, so we want this one. So it's asking out of these, which ones do you need? It's actually letting you know, hey, this is what we have next. You know, you're going to select one of these. So let's go ahead and, and uh, select uh, the one we want. So will the applicant operate as intermodal equipment provider? No, th that's for like your chassis. Um, you know, the, the chassis over at the, um, the ports, th this is what they're talking about. And the containers, these people lend, uh, lend those out and they get them back. These are your intermodal equipment providers. No, we're not doing, oh, I hit yes. No, we are not doing that. Hit next. Will the applicant transport property? So we're doing a freight broker. So the answer is no, we're not transporting property. If you're a trucker, then that answer would be yes. Hit next. Will the applicant, applicant transport any passengers? No, we're not doing that. We're getting our broker authority. Will the applicant provide property or household goods broker services? Yes. If you're a broker, this is where you want to select yes. Now it's going to ask, and now it's going to ask me, well, what type of broker services will the applicant provide? Is it general freight or household goods? So we're going to go ahead and select general freight. I'm not doing household goods, just general freight. If you are, you can select both. Will the applicant provide freight forwarder services? So no, that's basically someone who stores cargo for a short um, uh, time and then uh, sends it off to the next location. So that's a freight forwarder. Basically a freight forwarder is anybody who keeps possession of the cargo while in transit. So those are the people that are basically um, getting stuff overseas, a lot of that. Hit next, so the answer is no for us. Will the applicant operate as a cargo tank facility? So basically we're saying no to all of these. We only want one type of authority. Will the applicant operate as a driveway? No. 
We're, we already selected what we're operating at. So at this point, we're just selecting no. Will the applicant operate as a tollway? Nope. And now it's asking, okay, uh, freight broker, so what will you be hauling? And from here, you can go ahead, okay, I'm gonna do this general freight, um, some coils, uh, maybe I'll be getting into that, some logs for sure, building material. Might be doing auto hauling, mm, maybe, let's put it on there. Um, let's see what else we got. Uh, intermodel container, while I be getting that? It is hot right now, we'll see. Uh, fresh produce, intermodel container, why not? Grain, I'm not sure, we'll probably be doing some meat. So it's whatever you're gonna haul, right? And I'm just going through these guys, I'm literally like just off the top of my head, just saying, yeah, this is what I'm gonna do. Um, so then you select whatever it is that you plan on brokering, and hit next and you can you can update this just so you know you can change it right uh, so from here it's saying hey uh, the applicant has selected motor vehicle and or drive tow away from the list of cargo classifications um, these cargo classifications are frequently considered class 9 miscellaneous so yes if you're an auto hauler you are considered hazardous material however it's class 9 which is basically low hazmat um, and the difference is you just need a different type of insurance filing or a higher limit um, which is normal and to be honest the, the higher limit is what every shipper wants anyway so will you be transporting these no i'm not transporting it i will be brokering it but i'm not transporting it okay so just like last time at the end of each section it's going to ask you is this the right answers or here are the questions and here are the answers everything good so yes these are this is what i selected let's hit next Okay, so FMC ha FMCSA has determined the applicant will operate property broker general freight. The company has estimated financial responsibility minimum for the surety bond or, tr or trust fund of 75000 Basically, you need a fund of 75000 All right, I'll put a link. Um, I know uh, we've partnered over with our, our friends over at Gold River Insurance. They'll be able to help you out with this. Um, the bond doesn't take too long to get, uh, but it is based off your credit. Okay, a bond is based off your credit and whoever are the owners, all of them will have to uh, sign up for the bond. Okay, so this is just something known. A bond is not an insurance. It's basically like a, like a loan, like a fronted loan. Like, hey, if anything happens, we'll loan you up to 75000 However, a bond is owed back to the company. So you never really want to use a bond. If you're using a bond, someone's like saying that you did something wrong and they're trying to come after you and the bond will basically stop that. Um, so you don't really want to use it, but... FMCSA says in order for you to activate your MC, your, your MC for your for your broker authority, you will need a $75,000 bond in place. You guys, I've seen them anywhere from like $900 to $9,000. So again, it goes off of your credit. Okay, we'll hit next. And I'll put the link um, for uh, if you guys need an insurance quote, I'll put the link below. Hit next. Okay, so FMCSA wants to know if you've been affiliated with any other DOT. Have you had any other DOT in the past before? And this is important. If, you, if you've had one before, it's very important you disclose it. You can't, um, if FMCSA can link you with the DOT with the email, with the address, with the phone number, whoever the owner is, tax ID. So if you've had one before, you don't want to hide it. Uh, you want to disclose it uh, because they will link you to it. Okay, uh, so it's important that you do that. Uh, does applicant currently have or has had within the last three years of the date filing this application? Basically, have you had, have you, do you, have you owned a, a DOT in the last three years? So the answer is no. If you did, they want you to disclose it. Okay. And if you're reopening your DOT up, that's okay. If you're coming back and you're reopening, there's, there's no problem with that. But if like, let's say you messed up a DOT and you're trying to go around the system and open up another one, that's what I'm talking about. That they'll just flag you and connect you with both. And it's like you did all that for nothing. That's, that's pretty much what I'm saying. If you did want to separate your, your trucking company and your broker company, because some insurance don't like it and some do, you have to figure out what that is. You basically have to separate it entirely. A different address, different phone number, different email, different owner. All right. Um, any questions on that, though, um, email me, comment down below. I can help you out. Hit next. So, no, I don't have affiliation with any other DOT. This is my first one. Uh, certifying that all this is true and correct. That's the next part of this. That's what it's saying that we're about to do. And so it's saying, uh, go ahead and it's just basically saying, hey, I, Oscar Hernandez, and telling the truth. If not, and I'm lying, making all this stuff up, I can be fined up to 250000 and going to jail for five years. Um, so it wants you to put in your first and last name and then put in your password that you created in the beginning. And this, they will accept as your electronic signature. So hit next. And we're going to do this a few times. Compliance certification. Um, this is just telling you that, hey, as part of um, activate a uh, being with DOT, that there are certain records 
that you must have in compliance. So you have to be in compliance, all right? Um, this is highly more on the trucking side than it is the, the brokerage side, but nonetheless, they're basically saying, hey, all the, it's up to you to read all the rules. We're letting you know these rules exist. That's what this is saying, and it's true. Uh, does the applicant certify it's willing to be able to uh, provide the proposed operation service and to basically saying, are you certifying that you're willing to comply with all the rules and regulations, safety fitness requirements, motor vehicle safety standards, and minimum financial responsibility and designation of a process agent requirement. They're like, are you gonna play with by all the rules? Yes or no. So you have to to play. Does the applicant certified for review? Basically, this next part is saying, hey, if we ever contact you and say, give me your compliance paperwork, just so you know that you have 48 hours within a written, of that written re request to send it in. The FMCSA does have that type of authority. Now, they never uh, exercise this so much. The only times they do this, you guys remember that, that Colorado incident um, with the young man, so sad, but, um, just everything in general. But, um, basically, incidents like that where it's very drastic or someone or if they, someone's caught you know, maybe under the influence, that's where they'll go ahead and do the 48-hour thing or you haven't responded for something else. But for the most part, in the beginning where they're looking for the compliance or doing the audits, they give you like 21 business days or something like that, a whole month basically to get it over. All right, so yes, I, I certify that uh, if you request these documents, these compliance documents, I will send them back to you. And just so you know, most of these compliance documents you have to have anyways to do business. Um, so I have a... Um, in our website, there's a new entrant audit guide that you can download and it'll go over all these documents and you'll see most of them, you have to have them anyways to do business, okay? So you can go to our website, uh, truckersauthority.com and download the new entrant audit guide to see that, okay? So we'll hit next. Does the applicant certify it's not currently disqualified from operating commercial vehicles in the United States? So if you've been disqualified from operating commercial vehicles, you're gonna have an issue getting um, an authority. Why? Well, because you got disqualified and the main job has to do with transportation. All right. Uh, does the applicant certify he understands the agent of service? Of, basically, this is um, agent of service of process. You need a BOC3 filing and you have to get one in order to activate your MC. And this is basically someone that takes um, uh, legal documents on your behalf uh, from different states. In case, you know, you're a broker from Texas, someone sues you in Florida. They'll take the documents from your behalf from Florida and mail it over to you. Uh, very quick process. I have a video for that as well. Um, you can look it up in the links. I'll put it on there in case you guys need the BOC3. So we'll hit next. Uh, does the applicant certify that the carrier is not prohibited prohibited from filing this application because FMCSA, basically, you got your DOT suspended it, or revoked in the last 30 days. If you did and you're trying to fill out an application again, it's just not going to happen. So they're saying, hey, man, like even if you get your DOT suspended, you have to wait 30 days before you can uh, reactivate it. So, yes, I certified that in the last 30 days. No, I haven't been suspended or my uh, DOT hasn't been revoked. If the applicant's registration is currently revoked, does the applicant certify um, the deficiency cited and the revocation proceedings have been corrected. So if you have and it's past the 30 days, cool, hit yes. And then it'll ask you for your signature, or excuse me, your password, and it'll take it as your signature. Once again, it's going to say, is this all correct? If so, hit next. And again, questions and answers, but what you just did. Uh, and this is the applicant's oath. Basically, whoever's filling out this application, in this case, it's me, right? Or the owner or whoever's doing the permits. Um, we just want to make sure that you're telling the truth. So I'll go ahead and enter my information. I certified. Same thing. I certified. I'm not making stuff up. If not, um, I can go up jail up five years or $250,000 fine. That's okay. Ain't nobody doing anything like that. Put owner and then hit next. Okay, now it says you have to register for your FMCSA portal account. So I want you guys to know you have two different sites. You have your portal account and then you have your, your um, USDOT account. These are two different sites to update your, your um, MC authority. For the most part, you will only use one. The portal account, you're, you're using it for the clearinghouse. Uh, and in rare occasions to update um, information about if an owner leaves or something like that. Um, nonetheless, they want you to set it up right now. So we'll hit next. We're going to set up a portal account. Should the company official role be assigned to the company contact Oscar Hernandez? So it's basically saying, you know who you put in the beginning? Should that, so should that be the owner of the portal account? They do want to assign someone as the main owner of that 
of the portal account. And, and they're making they're going to make you sign like, hey, I certified I'm not doing any fraud. And that's why they, they assign a name to that portal account. So yeah, I'll go ahead and be the representative for that. So your user ID, just so you guys know, um, has to be an email address. It used to be different before. The password, I use the same password that I use for this application. It doesn't really matter. Whoops. Okay, so it asked me for um, for the portal, the user ID is your email, um, then the password, then it wants you to have an, uh, another email. So this is user ID, and then this is my contact information for that portal. Method of contact, both. Like by email or by mail, do both. If they can't reach you, try the other contact method. Okay, have the email entered. Contact is both ways. Hit next. Make sure both the emails do match. Would you like to use the same security questions? And this is for the for the FMCSA portal account. So if you're doing it for yourself, absolutely. Same security questions. No need to redo it. Register for company official um, FMCSA portal account. It's just letting you know, hey, there's um, sensitive information here. This is the government site. Um, if you you know if you're doing anything hanky panky stuff, ten years in jail. All right. So no one's doing anything like that. We're not hackers. Um, register for company official FMCSA portal site. Um, it's just letting you know that you agree to uh, abide by the rules right here. Okay. And honestly, there's not much to do here, but update your name and address. So, and your company contact. So not much to do. Okay. We'll hit next. Uh, register USDOT company FMCSA for the official FMCSA portal account. Uh, it's basically saying, hey, whoever's responsible, you're the one responsible for the password, the logins, any updates in here. So whoever you make the owner of the FMCSA portal account is responsible for it. And again, this is all going to be your information. So you're responsible for your own authority and the information that you put on there. And once again, yes, I, I, um, I acknowledge that I am responsible for the information that I enter into the system. That's what this is, okay? It's a lot of these yeses, they're, you know, cert certifying. Uh, FMC has determined um, the applicant will operate as property broker general freight to proceed with submitting the applicant's application and application fee of $300 is required. So 300 bucks, all right? This is how you know if you're getting an MC number is you're paying $300. If you're paying $0, you're only getting a DOT number. You gotta go back, see what you missed, all right? You gotta pick an authority and that's how you pay the $300. Okay, so we'll hit next. Um, an FMCSA is basically saying, hey, this stuff is non-refundable. Um, if you know, if you select two authorities and you met one, like, oops, be careful. Uh, you should only, if you're, for every, every authority is $300 basically. So if you're just getting one authority, just know all you should be paying is $300. Over here is just telling you it's non-refundable. Be careful um, that, make sure you did this correct. And then it's asking for the credit card information. Okay, enter the payment information and go ahead and uh, select submit payment. Oops, forgot to enter the security code. So um, enter payment information and hit submit payment. And uh, there you go. Uh, here is my DOT number. $300 has been taken um, and uh, I got my authority for a uh, property of broker and then it tells you, hey, you can get your PIN number. Um, so you can go ahead and get your PIN number via here and I actually have another um, video that already goes over this, how to get your PIN number. So you can check that one out. Um, please be advised, you may receive phone calls and or emails from solicitors after applying for USDOT numbers. The phone calls are not from FMCSA and you are not required to pay for the services that you can otherwise complete on your own. And this is so true. This is why I make these videos. If you're a new entrant motor carrier, FMCSA may contact you likely after 30 days to validate your new entrant registration. So everybody, anybody new, um, they'll reach out to you within 30 days. You may also receive email requests to access your FMCSA portal account. Do not approve these requests if you do not know the person requesting it. This is so true. Basically, FMCSA doesn't call you left and right, and you're going to start seeing that a lot of companies, um, oh, it continues. Let me just continue. The U.S. government does not endorse private businesses or vendors, and the use of a service provider is not required by FMCSA. 
For aggressive or misleading marketers, complaints, you may file a complaint to the Federal Trade Commission. And this is true. There are some people that abuse this a lot. Uh, so just a heads up, FMCSA does not reach out to you left and right, but you will get a lot of third parties like naming themselves dot dot compliance dot dot something with and none of it's dot gov. They just make it they make it look like it's FMCSA. So they're, they're just giving you a heads up of, of what's going to happen. So all of this. Inf so once you're done, you want to go ahead and print your application, which is right here. And you're going to hit print all H all all summary HTML. And there you go. There's your whole there's your whole application. Just hit print page and save this to your desktop. So I went ahead and saved it. So again, print page and then download it to your desktop and call it USDOT and MC number application. And you want to keep this for, for future. But nonetheless, you, um, uh, the, really, the it, you just want to keep it in the sense of all everything that you input into the application. In case for some reason you enter the wrong tax ID, you can at least at least use the tax ID in this application. All right. So go ahead and save this in your files. And the last thing you want to do, and this is just me, I'd always take extra steps, but really the only one you need to print out is the report. This one right here, select report. And basically what it prints out is an app is an application of everything you just entered. Go ahead and save that as well. You only need this one. Technically, I just do extra and like to be uh, extra cautious, but um, go ahead and save this uh, to your desktop. And that's it guys you're all done so your mc number where do you get your mc number sure i'm gonna show you that i'm gonna show you that real quick but you're all done you can hit next there's, there's really nothing to do uh just get a copy of all the the documents i told you and hit log out but you're done there's your dot number so let me show you do you want do you wish to exit unify yes we are all done let me show you guys how you can find your mc number so normally what you would do this is called safer's company snapshot and you can enter any dot and this is the public information you can enter any dot in here and, it'll, and, and you can pull up certain information. So the DOT is brand new. You have to wait a bit. All right. So you can't. So the new DOT that I just got, I put it in here. Nothing's going to pop up. It says invalid. So I'm just going to pull up. I pulled up a random DOT and I want to show you once you get inside here, you're going to go to licensing and insurance. You're going to hit I'm not a robot and hit search. And again, give it until the next day, 24 hours, if not later that day, but for sure, 24 hours. Once you select that, you can find your docket number, AKA your MC number right here. And I just took a random one just to, just to show you guys, because if I were to enter my DOT number, it's not in the system yet because it's so brand new. But again, if we just go back in the steps, you enter your deal. This will, the, this thing will be in the description. Enter the DOT, hit search, um, go to licensing and insurance, licensing and insurance. And it skipped it for me, but right there you'd, you'd select, I'm not a robot. I already did that. So just fast forward and here's your MC number, your docking number. All right. I hope if you guys have any questions, please let me know, comment down below and I'll get back to you. Uh, but again, thank you so much. I hope this helped you guys and please go ahead and subscribe if you like what you see. You guys have a good one.